Okay, so thank you very much to the organizers for uh, the effort that they have put in setting this conference. Uh, it has been a great pleasure to be here and also to uh, see friends on Zoom, even though it would have been even better if you were able to be present. Uh, thank you also to everybody who has come after the afternoon walk. It's sunny and nice outside, so I know that the competition is tough. So I, will, uh, I hope you will enjoy the talk. I will talk about olive 2 ironshine trees. It's a topic that many of you have worked on, uh, so much so that, of course, I, I don't think that uh, I will be able to mention all the great work that people have done about olive 2 ironshine trees, but I'll mention some work concentrating on my joint work in progress with Rahman Mohammedpur. And I will explain the word universal. So let me uh, first introduce this notion of weak embeddings. Uh, so I'm going to be talking both about Aleph 1 and Aleph 2. So Kappa will be one of these two cardinals. And I will denote by T Kappa the class of trees that have height and size Kappa and do not have an unbounded branch. So these are like Aronshine trees, but they can be fed wide. And inside of that class, we are going to uh, distinguish the kappa aronshine trees, which will be denoted, the class will be denoted by a kappa. Uh, and as I said, the elements of T kappa are sometimes called white kappa aronshine trees. Well, those who have been uh, uh, present in some of the Zoom talks that I've given on some recent work on this, uh, I gave a few talks about wide Aleph 1 Aronshine trees, and what I'm going to talk about today is an attempt to uh, address the same problem, but for Aleph 2. So we're going to consider these classes of trees under what's called weak embeddings, although I might often forget to say this word weak. What is a weak embedding? So these are functions which are not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but they do preserve strict order. So if x is less than y in the domain, then f of x is less than f of y in the range. So in particular, these embeddings are one-to-one uh, -one on branches of our tree. And we want to look at these classes under this relation. So th there are, of course, many things that one could ask. The main question that interests us is the existence of a universal, or some people say maximal element, in these classes under this kind of embed. So let me tell you what is known about Aleph 1. Of course, you all know that uh, Aronshine trees exist just in ZFC. Uh, they were constructed by Aronshine, but their first appearance in print is in the thesis of Juro Kurepa in 1935 in Paris. Uh, then there is a result that was published in 2007, but it was known before by papers that were circulated due to Stevota Dorchert, who proved that under the assumptions of MA and the negation of CH, there are no universal Aronshine trees under this kind of embed. And he used the technology of Lipschitz trees, it's a nice class of rather elegant trees that are actually cofinal in the class of Aronshine trees under these assumptions. Now, how about CH? So uh, those of you who have thought of universality problems in first order theories know that any uncountable, that any countable first order theory will have a universal element on of size Aleph 1. Uh, well, but this is not a first order theory because we do not know how to say that there is no unbounded branch in a first order way. So this kind of reasoning doesn't help us. There is another kind of reasoning that I will mention in a minute, which uh, uses something called sigma operator. I'll remind you of that, but it doesn't apply here because Aronshine trees are not closed under the sigma operation. And in fact, just under CH, we don't really know if there is a universal or not. Kind of embarrassing. There is a very nice paper by Abraham and Shella from 1985 where they consider embeddings, but 
the requirement applies only on club many levels. So they prove that it's consistent that GCH holds, and there is a universal element in this class under this type of embeddings. But the club is very important. Uh, notice that this problem is connected with the problem of specializing Garonshine trees because a non-special tree cannot be clean bed into a special one. So uh, there is a connection with specialization and you will see that this connection appears a lot in the work that uh, one does in this subject. Let me also remind you of a result that is often credited to Specker because I suppose people don't go and look at the original paper, but the result is actually due to Sikorsky, as Specker says in his paper, where he's reporting <laughs> on this. So uh, the result is that if two to the less than lambda is equal to lambda, then one can basically imitate the construction of the Aronshine tree on LF1 and find an LF and lambda plus Aronshine tree. Let me also remind you of a question that I will not be addressing, but is probably one of the main questions in set theory. Is it consistent to have a model of set theory? You can take any large cardinals you like, uh, up to I0, I guess. <laughs> uh, that uh, in this model, you want that no cardinals have Aronshine 3 except for Aleph 1, which we know has to have. So no successor cardinals. That's a question by Magidor. So how about wide lambda Aronshine trees? Well, they are easy to construct because uh, there is no uh, compactness requirement of the small levels. So they exist for any lambda. You can, for example, just take a disjoint sum of ordinals, less than lambda. Uh, and under CH, we can use the sigma operator, which was introduced by Kurepa. What does it do? Uh, it, you have a tree, and now you can associate with a tree that consists, another tree which consists of increasing sequences of elements of your original tree. And you can see that this tree does not embed into the uh, original tree. And so if they happen to be in the same class, you don't have a universal. So for white Aronshine tree, that class is closed under this operation, and so there is no universal Aronshine 3, when CH is assumed, huh? without CH is different. Now, how about other situations under MA and not CH? There is no universal wide Aronshine 3. That is in our paper with Shella that appeared in JSL. Um, and uh, let me say that uh, this result, a posteriori, is also possible to obtain using the Dorchevic methods, uh, as he noticed after seeing our our preprint, and he maybe have known before, but well, also his result is possible to obtain using our method. And I'm not saying this just to talk about credits, but to actually tell you that they are two clearly different technologies for obtaining these results. And we are actually going to wonder how much we can generalize or step up from these technologies to Aleph 2. Uh, and then uh, also one of the results in our papers is that under MA plus not CH, the class of Aronshine trees is cofinal in the class of wide Aronshine trees. Every wide Aronshine tree embeds into an Aronshine tree, which complements nicely what Stevo had proved that uh, the class of Lipschitz trees is cofinal in the class of Aronshine trees. Uh, so now how about Aleph 2? Now, Aleph 2, we don't have uh, Mr. Aronshine to prove us that there is always an Aronshine 3. This is not true. So first of all, of course, everybody knows that Jensen constructed Suslin and even Suslin trees on Aleph 2 in L. Uh, but from the existence of a weakly compact cardinal, one can force a model in which there are no Aleph 2 Aronshine trees. This is a, also a very celebrated work uh, by Mitchell. It applies to all successor cardinals kappa plus. Um, uh, we can have it similarly. And we, Mitchell also has a uh, equiconsistency result. That is, if we have a regular cardinal kappa such that there are no kappa plus Aronshine trees, then kappa plus is weakly compact in L. In fact, this part of Mitchell's work is due to silver. 
Mitchell proved something else with a similar technology, and then Silver notices that it proves this as well, as it says in Mitchell's paper. Anyway, from a weekly compact cardinal, we have another celebrated work, which is by Lever and Shellach from 1981. They, they uh, force a model in which CH holds, and all Aleph 2 Aronshine trees are special. What do we understand by special? Simply, they are Aleph 1 union of antichains. And uh, in passing, let me mention that Lever and Shellach paper has been generalized by Omer Benaria and uh, Thomas Gilton to, uh, to a much more uh, powerful technology using what they called FWC proper forcings in a recent paper. Uh, but we won't go that far. So what about universality? What can we say? So one thing that one could uh, attempt to do is to generalize this to Dorchevich's method, uh, for example, or our method. So let's see first about generalizing Martin axiom. Generalizing Martin axiom was a popular thing to do in the 80s or late 70s. Both Baumgartner and Schellach had slightly different axioms for uh, doing this. I'm going to mention an axiom, forcing axiom that was proven by Schellach, which some people call Schellach's forcing axiom. So this is what he proved. It's consistent that CH holds along with the forcing axiom for forcings which satisfy the following properties. They are strongly Aleph 2 CC. I won't specify what strongly means, but it means that more than just aunt, uh, uh, if you take Aleph 2 many conditions there are two that, that are compatible. So there have to be somehow lots of conditions that are compatible in every subset of size Aleph 2. The forcing also needs to be countably closed. And a condition that appears here and not in the original Martin axiom, well met. So this condition is that every two compatible conditions have the least upper bound. All of these conditions can be somehow relaxed, but, but let us say not in a way that is essential to what we talk about here. So this is consistent with any reasonable size of 2 to the Aleph 1, larger than Aleph 2, and one can meet, like in the Martin axiom, less than 2 to the Aleph 1 many dense sets. So, um, I, uh, well, less than 2 to the Aleph 1, like in Martin axiom. Hmm? So, I've mentioned this axiom because there is, a, there is work that's available uh, due to uh, Xiao Jiang who wrote a PhD thesis at Cornell in 2020, and he investigated various forcing axioms, mostly this Schellach forcing axiom, for countably closed posets. And one of the lines of research that he took is to investigate possible generalizations of Todorcevich's Lipschitz tree technology to Aleph 2. And uh, he attempted to prove a theorem which claims that under CH plus this uh, Shella forcing axiom, there is no universal Aleph 2 Aron Shine 3. Unfortunately, this theorem 37 uh, is not correct. So we noticed this and wrote to Justin, who agreed with us, and not only that there is a gap in the proof of the main lemma, which is lemma 18, but actually this lemma is provably wrong modulo the other arguments and re known results that are mentioned in the thesis. So this theorem, unfortunately, uh, well, the question of the possible model where there is no universal Aleph 2 Aronshine trees and CH holes was left open. And also the question of the model in which there is a universal. We'll talk about both of those questions. So let me now start a little bit about our own work with Rahman. Uh, so the starting point in almost all the work that has to do with uh, this type of questions is a method by Baumgartner, Mallets, and Reinhardt uh, from 1970 in their proof, in which they proved that under MA and not CH, uh, all Aronstein trees are special. So what they have there is a nice proof of the chain condition. Uh, so they specialize using the specializing functions. And they proof that the forcing is CCC 
uh, uses a certain lemma which says that under certain circumstances in a tree which doesn't have any branches of size of length omega 1, uh, when we are given an uncountable set of conditions, finite conditions, we can find two parts such that no point of the first one is below any point of the second one and vice versa. So in our forcing from uh, the paper that I mentioned, we introduced another way of specializing Aronshine trees. After all, there are several different ways known. Uh, the proof that the forcing is CCC is more complicated, but still uses this BMR method. So I'm going to show you this forcing because we will attempt to generalize it to Aleph 2. So uh, this theorem, is that whenever we have a 3T, which is Aronshine, then we can find the CCC forcing, which adds another Aronshine tree, so that this other Aronshine tree is not embeddable weakly into the one that we started from. Then I show you the definition. Uh, well, so this slide, unlike the other ones, has some notation and so on. Uh, so I'll try to walk you slowly through it, but if you don't, Remember everything, it's not so important. So, but what we do is we define this forcing which I'll call Q. In it, it consists, it has four parts, U, P, V, P, less than P, some order, and C, P. So U, what are they? Uh, so V, P is a part of our three T. It's finite, and it has the root. We work with, uh, with rooted trees. And UP is going to be adding this new tree. And we're going to add a tree such that, as is usual in the subject, the alpha level of the tree is indexed by the ordinal interval omega times alpha plus omega. So you can think in this way that every ordinal has obtained a level, which is the, the exact block of omega where this ordinal appears. We call that the height of an ordinal. And what we're going to do, oops, Sorry. Uh, we are going to imitate this VP inside, in, we are going to imitate UP inside of the VP, and we are not, uh, sorry, we are going to imitate VP inside of the UP. Uh, so for everything that has appeared as some height in this VP, we imitate it. We find another one in the tree that we are adding. I say tree, we, we are adding, how do you add a tree? Well, at least this order, this less than p, is supposed to be collecting to become a tree. So it's a tree-like partial order, which respects the levels, the heights, and which fixes the intersection. I call the intersection the delta of the, you know, where the two branches meet, and fixes the root. So uh, what else? What is this CP? This CP is kind of like a specializing function, but it's not exactly. It's a function that specializes both of these trees at the same time. So it's a function that uh, is going to act on the limit levels, so the product of the limit levels of the same height of these two trees at the end. It goes into omega. And it looks a little bit like a specializing function, except it has this one extra requirement. So if we have two pairs of ordinals that get the same C, then first of all, they're not the same. They have a different level. This alpha is their common level because they all come from common levels. The first coordinates are incompatible. The second coordinates are incompatible. And this important condition, the height of the intersection in the U tree, the new tree that we are adding, is bigger than the height in the second tree. And we are able to prove that if we can force this and glue everything together, then this C, of course, becomes a global function on our new T, and that the existence of such a function C uh, specializes both of those trees. And the order, of course, is as you would imagine. The bigger condition Q uh, increases U and V, and increases all the coordinates, and it preserves the intersection and the root. Okay, so. That's the definition. And as I said, we proved that the generic C specializes both T that we started with and this new T, which I denote by T prime. And we proved that the forcing is CC. And the later fact uses this fact 
from the BMR paper, which I'm calling BMR lemma, which I'm sure many people know. I'm just going to recall it. If we have a tree of height and cardinality omega 1 with no uncountable branches, and if somebody gives us an uncountable family of finite pairwise disjoint subsets, then there are two of them, S and S prime, such that no element of the first one is compatible with any element of the second one. So that helps you when you do the delta system lemma. The delta system lemma produces this, and then you can put them. Uh, also, what we want to do is to generalize this theorem to Aleph 2. So the first thing to ask is what happens to this lemma? The, verbat, the, the literary uh, ar argument for this lemma is not true on Aleph 2. Uh, so it's not true for Aleph 2 other shine trees. In fact, Lever, in an unpublished work which is mentioned in Lever and Shellach, introduced the notion of ascent paths and prove that an Aleph through Aronshine tree, which has an ascent part, cannot be special. So this ascent part is kind of a replacement for a branch. Uh, so even though you don't have an unbounded branch, you have an ascent part, and you cannot be specialized. Uh, we are going to use a weaker version of these ascent parts, which was introduced by Philip Hook in his very nice paper in 2017. So a weak ascent part is what? Well, it's the opposite of what was there in the BMR lemma. So it's a sequence of aleph of length omega 2 uh, of some small sequences. Each one of those x alpha is an omega sequence. So now we're replacing finite by countable. Countable sequence of distinct elements, all of the same height in your tree. And they behave the opposite of the BMR lemma. That is, for every alpha and beta, we can find something in the alpha sequence which is less than something in the beta sequence, where alpha and beta Alpha is less than. So that's a weak ascent part. And what we know about them is this theorem that Luke proved that if we have a tree of size and height omega 2 with a weak ascent part, then T cannot be special. Uh, now, do such things exist? Yes, Baumgartner and Shella and Stanley independently proved that if we have uh, the box principle, the square principle, then there is an Aleph to Aronshine tree with an accent part. So under the assumption of square, well, of course, we know this. Uh, there are trees that are not specializable. So what we can do then to generalize our forcing to trees that do not have such weak ascent parts. So uh, we can, in fact, define a forcing similar to the one that I explained to you. Now I'm going to call Q2 for Aleph 2, the obvious generalization. So you replace Aleph 1 by Aleph 2. You replace finite by countable. You have a forcing. And what does it do? Uh, well, we can prove that under CH, uh, well, we want to know that there are some Aleph 2 other entries. So CH helps for that. So suppose that we have an Aronshine tree with no weak ascent part, then this forcing is Aleph 2 CC and it is countably closed. And it adds another tree, another Aronshine tree, Aleph 2 Aronshine tree, which is special and not weakly embeddable into the one we started from. And it specializes T. So it looks like we're done, right? But we cannot iterate this with the forcing axioms because the forcing doesn't have the strong Aleph 2 CC. The BMR lemma doesn't give you many compatible conditions, only two. And also, it's not well met. So it's not a forcing where we can use the Shella axiom. Uh, another earlier result was proven by Rahman. Uh, we also don't know how to iterate, as it requires Aleph 2 then sets. So Rahman Mohammedpur proved the following theorem. Assume that you are in a model of PFA, then every tree of height and size omega 2 without cofinal branches is specializable by a proper and Aleph 2 preserving forcing with finite conditions and models on the side. So you see, the conclusion is not that there are no such trees under PFA, because under PFA you can only meet Aleph 1 many then sets, and here you need Aleph. So, how do we iterate then? So an iteration method was developed by Lever and Shellach in their paper, in which starting from a weakly compact cardinal 
which is collapsed to become LF2, they obtain a model in which there are no LF2 Suslin trees. This is by forcing with countable blunt chains. And another model in which every LF2 Aronshine tree is special, in which they force by countable specializing functions. And if you know this paper, the main point of the paper is to prove that you have the chain condition in the detection. Now, replacing these forcings by the forcing Q2 that I have mentioned, gives the following theorem from this work, which uh, is in preparation because we, well, we have other ideas, but this theorem, okay, so, but so far this theorem, from the consistency of the weakly compact cardinal, there follows the consistency of the non-existence of a universal Aleph to Aronshine tree. Okay, so, in fact, the same can be said about wide Aleph to Aronshine trees because their argument doesn't really use the fact that the level suspect. Well, there is a CH I should have said in this. Uh, yes, thank you, Bob. Should have. Okay, now positive universality results. Until now, no model has been known in which there is a universal Aronshine or wide Aronshine tree. So here I would like to mention some other work in preparation, which is not by us. Uh, so these questions were completely open, both an LF1 and an LF2. And Yoko Vananen told me during this conference that in joint work with Benaria and Magador, they obtain the first known positive universality result, which has a similar proof in a sense to the one that I did, in the sense that they also use the lever shella methodology. So from the consistency of the weekly compact cardinal, there follows the consistency of the existence of a universal wide Aleph 2 Aronshine tree. And in fact, this is a strongly universal because they don't need weak embeddings. They actually use one-to-one -one embeddings. And similarly, they can show the same for the wide Aronshine trees. Now, this all is about the classes of wide things, and it remains to know what happens with Aronshine trees. It is still not known if there is a... On Aleph 1, yes. So they can do it for Aleph 2. They can do it for Aleph 1, but both times for wide trees. And their strategy follows, uh, if you know these universality results, often you add in the first coordinate the thing that will become universal, and then you keep embedding into that. So they add a wide Aleph 2 or Aleph 1 Aronshine 3, and then they keep embedding. And of course, the whole point is to prove that you have CCC. So perhaps one can combine. I even mentioned to Yoko with our method of embedding wide Aronshine trees into Aronshine trees to solve this problem for Aronshine trees. I don't know. Let me just spend the remaining two minutes that, uh, to mention that, well, what are those Lipschitz kind of trees? In a sense, Lipschitz trees are trees that do not move too much the intersections, the delta of the, in the tree. So trying to see what can be really said about that, we uh, remembered and we remember here a known theorem from 2004 that was proven by Yoko and myself in a paper that perhaps can be improved. So what did we prove? That if we have any regular cardinal and we have kappa and we have lambda equal to the weak power less than kappa, and we have two assumptions. The one is that the first one, there is a club guessing between kappa and lambda. And the second one is that kappa is between, kappa is less than two to the lambda. So it's bigger than lambda, but less than two to the lambda. Then the conclusion can be, a conclusion can be made about a very special weak embedding. So we did make it with a strong requirement that the level of the intersection is preserved. So delta is preserved. And then um, we are going to look at the class of trees that have size kappa and do not have branches of size lambda plus. Then the universality number of this class has to be at least two to the lambda. So the question that we are looking at with Rahman at his uh, very nice suggestion is to see if we can somehow change this preservation of delta for preservation of delta up to some constant things like that. 
Okay, so I'll keep you posted on that one. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Vyeslav is obsessed by masks. Okay, okay. okay. so uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, one question. I mean, because you have uh, negative results about universality, yes? Yes. So, uh, there is a relatively recent result uh, which I proved with Adam Kravczyk that uh, if you have a class of finite structures, finite, or finitely generated, then uh, if it fails the so-called weak amalgamation property, then the universality number is large yes. of countable ones. So mm -hmm. I wonder whether, because I think that this result can be pushed up to higher cardinals, so I wonder whether there is something like weak, uh, the failure of weak amalgamation property. Mm -hmm. or the trees you are uh, looking That's at. That's a yes. very good question, Vyeslav, mm -hmm. because, uh, well, I think you know yeah, this because we talk a lot. Well, no, the microphone here, yeah, the microphone. Yes, but yeah. they, they don't they hear. They don't hear. So, so Vyeslav mentioned his recent work with Adam Kravchak in which they uh, considered uh, objects obtained by lo uh, finite or locally finite approximations, so usually countable objects, and they have proven that uh, in the countable in the class of countable objects like that, there cannot be a universal unless there is a something called weak amalgamation property between these finite pieces. And Vyeslav has asked, is there something like that for uncountable objects? And well, I think the analog of the Frese constructions that are in the, in the heart of, of what you were doing with Adam here, of course, are the forcing constructions where we are constructing an object by small approximations. And the analog of the amalgamation property is the chain condition, because when we try to prove the chain condition, we are gluing together small approximations. And while I would be doubtful that we can prove an, uh, an equivalence like you obtained in your paper, that this weak amalgamation is actually equivalent to uh, the failure of, of uh, universality, I think that what we could prove is that unless we have such an amalgamation property, our forcings cannot give us a universal object. So I this is the analogy. What about Aleph 3? Well, surprisingly enough, some of these results do work for Aleph 3, like the one that I mentioned at the end, and also I believe the one uh, of Yoko and, and uh, Benaria and Magidor. Uh, we simply didn't look at Aleph 3 so much because uh, uh, we don't understand Aleph 2 enough and so, but I think some of it, once we do, will carry up. Thank you.